What's good, everybody? This is your Jesus King review for Kanye West. I believe, dang it, this is eighth studio album. I'm not even sure. I have to check with you on that. But overall, it was a good album, a good listen, in my opinion. And it has 11 tracks. The longest song will be about three minutes and some change. And um, man, I really gotta sneeze. That's terrible. But the longest track been about three minutes and some change, like 334, I believe. Standout tracks are the first track, Every Hour. Cellar was a decent track as well. I like Water. I thought it was going to be about baptism, but it was something totally different. Um, on this album, you can see a lot of resentment towards the Christian community in a way, saying that they didn't accept them. They didn't believe them when you first started doing these things. And like I said in another video that you should watch, that Christians were right to speculate for Kanye West. You know, you don't want to just blindly follow someone. But I get what he's saying that if you're supposedly supposed to be called the cultural order on um, people that forgive you, that accept you open arms, even if you did sinful, worldly things, that they shouldn't get that much ridicule. But the problem is Kanye didn't just come in as for forgiveness. He started having Sunday services. So that's why a lot of people have been critical of him. You have Ty Dolla Sign on the track Everything we need. Then you have Pusha T on the track. I believe use the gospel, which talks more about his journey in life. He's still de dealing with his demons, and he still is a secular music artist, but he does support gay in some of these decisions. I believe Kid Cudi vocals were on the album. He said he wasn't featured on the album, but he said that his vocals might be interpolated on albums. So I don't know what track that is, but I'm speculating that was also on Water. Now, hands on. It was one of them choppy type Khalid beats I heard, you know, very smooth vibe. But everything, I mean, every hour and Jesus Lord, I think those songs could have been interchanged. You know, that could be the first or the last track. I think Jesus Lord should have been maybe the opening track instead of every hour. Every hour it was a very upbeat, very up tempo song. And it should have been in the middle because albums sometimes they have some lows, but it had a lot of highs. I think Kanye did the right thing by keeping this album under, I believe, 33 minutes because for a Christian concept album and for new sounds, and let, make no mistake about it, this isn't a groundbreaking sound he's doing. He's always used Christian interpolations in his auto-tune, I mean, in his beat selection, in his past production. So this isn't anything new. You can see it in the mainstream. You can see it with his other artists. You can see it in some Big Sean's discography. You can see it in Travis Scott's. You can see it in Drake's with his choppy flows. So Kanye making Jesus King is not a big risk. I hope people understand that. For everybody saying this is a big risk, it's not. Because all he did was had to stop cussing, stop talking about models. He still brags a bit in some songs like he brags about why he makes the prices of his things so expensive because he's one of the greatest of all time. He still does have time to flex on some of these tracks. And when you go to Follow God, simple just him coming back home to his roots type of song. I really did appreciate this song. So overall... When it comes to this album, it's not a big risk for Kanye. It does sound pretty much the same to the life of Pablo. It goes back to his early days and his early production. And it is what you respect in 2019 from Kanye West without the cussing. He does repent for what he has said in the past. He does repent for what he has did. And honestly, whether it's genuine or not, I believe it's genuine, but I think he has a long ways to go. I did appreciate the interview he did with Big Boy. It opened up, me, it opened up a lot of things to me about Kanye in a way. And I like pretty much every track. My favorite is Every Hour. I like Water and, let's see, Use the Gospel with Pusha T. Todd Dollar Sign's interlude on Everything We Need is pretty well. That's a highlight of that song. I don't like that song as much. But I really dig Water and um, Every Hour. I just like the old school feel. You're in the church on Sunday morning. The upbeat women and men in the choir singing their butts off, basically. Fred Amman did have a hand in this project. He did do some of the productions, and that may explain some reasons why some of the singing sounds more organic than usual. And I think this album deserves a strong 7.5 out of 10. If it was a little bit longer and he had a little bit more to say, because he had some revealing verses, I did like how he, um, but I guess since I listened to the interview with him and Big Boy first before this, it kind of made everything on this album that seems refreshing to me because I heard it in the interview. And I liked the interview. So it's kind of like he repeating himself. If I would have heard this album first before the interview, maybe this would have been an 8.3. But for Kanye, this is definitely a step up from... um, What was this? Oh, yay. It was straight up yay. It's a step up from yay. It's a step up from Life of Pablo. 
and step up from Yeezus. Probably his best album of the 2010s. I'm going to go ahead and say that. No, I can't. I think, never mind. Life of Pablo is better than this. But it's definitely better than Ye and Yeezus. Oh, wait. My Dark Twisted Fantasy was released in the beginning of this um, decade. So my Dark Twisted Family uh, Fantasy, then this album. It's your boy Chef from Off The Dome. Peace out. Like, comment, share, subscribe. I'm out, guys.